A well-designed search bar is an important part of a website as it enhances user experience and improves website accessibility. Today, we will go through all the basics of creating an animated search bar that expands on being focused. Make sure to subscribe and click the notification bell if you haven't already, so you won't miss any of our web development tutorials. Let's jump right in. We will start by adding a container element for the search bar. Inside it, we place an input element with the type text and a button to trigger its functionality. We also assign suitable classes to these elements for CSS styling. Adding a placeholder attribute to the input field is a step forward for enhancing user experience, as it clearly communicates the purpose of the form control. Obviously, all this should be wrapped inside a form tag with proper validations, but that's a subject for another video. Let's focus on setting up the search bar in this tutorial. Next, we enhance the button by using a font awesome icon, adding a nice touch to the search bar. Now let's shift our focus to the CSS, where all the magic happens. Here, we have some foundational styles for the body and the page title. Next, let's prepare our container element with a class of search bar. We apply presentational styles, such as background color, box shadow, and border radius to enhance its appearance. After that, we set the width, max width, height, and padding to give the search bar some dimensions. Since we'll be reusing these dimensions at multiple places, it's a good idea to store them in CSS variables and then call them wherever needed. If you wish to learn more about the CSS variables, we have a short video explaining how they work. Now, let's add overflow hidden to ensure that all descendants remain contained within the parent element. We can also convert it into a flex container to properly align its children. Setting justify content to flex end will ensure that the button remains on the right-hand side. Let's temporarily give it a fixed width so we can see it better. Margin in line with the value auto will keep the search bar center aligned. Now, let's move on to the button. Again, make it a flex container to keep the icon perfectly centered. Then, we apply some presentational styles including font size, color, and background color. Setting the border to none will remove any default border that the button may have. Moving forward, we can reuse the same CSS variables we defined earlier for the width. This makes it a rectangle because the width is defined as 70 pixels, but the height of the button is 70 minus 8 pixels of the top padding and minus 8 pixels of the bottom padding, which is effectively 54 pixels. We can use the calc function in CSS to calculate the proper height. This single line of CSS subtracts two times the padding from the size of the button, effectively converting it into a proper square. Then we can give it a border radius of 50% to transform it into a perfect circle. Now let's switch to the input field. Along with some basic styles, we are giving it a flex value of auto, which will expand it to cover the remaining space. For the same reason, the button will have a flex value of none because we want it to retain a fixed dimension. Adding a bit of margin will create some negative space and keep it away from the boundaries. Let's move on to the animation part. First, we don't need the fixed width anymore, and we can switch the overflow property off for the time being. And the button now needs a defined height to retain its circular design. We can either give it a fixed height or use the aspect ratio property for better flexibility. We have another short video that delves into the aspect ratio property and demonstrates how we can leverage it to create responsive layouts. Then there are several ways to expand the width of the search bar, including the use of JavaScript. However, in this tutorial, we'll utilize the focus within pseudo class to achieve this effect. By definition, the focus within pseudo class selects an element if the element or any of its descendants are focused. In other words, it represents an element that is itself, or at least one of its children is matched by the focus pseudo class. In our case, if the search bar itself or any of its children are being focused, the width will be expanded. Now we can implement a transitioning effect to keep the change nice and smooth. Let's bring the overflow property back into play and remove the default border from the input field. To fine tune the transition, we can add opacity zero to the input field and bring it back when the search bar is expanded with the help of the same focus within pseudo class. The last thing remaining is the default outline we see when clicking inside the field. We can style it using the outline property or remove it completely. Having a clear outline is always recommended for a better user experience, but if we're removing it completely, then we should implement some other indications to provide visual feedback. So let's add a transparent outline to the parent container and then transition it to a solid color with the expansion of the search bar. Depending on the desired layout, the overall alignment can be changed to the left or right by simply tweaking the margin inline property of the search bar. And that's it. 
You now have an elegant and functional search bar ready to implement in your next project. Feel free to experiment with the code by following the link provided in the description. Share your suggestions or feedback in the comments below, and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.